This video is brought to you by Linode. Use the link down below to get a $100 60-day credit. Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out some awesome GNOME applications. Now, we all know about the core GNOME apps. We have Disks, which is awesome, Extensions, Gedit, and much more. But there are some Circle apps, some additional applications that fit very well within the GNOME ecosystem. All of these can be found over here on apps.gnome.org. And you could go ahead and check out a lot of information on these apps by simply clicking on them, getting the rundown of the info, some more info, and screenshots. All of these are available as Flatpak, so you can go ahead and download and install it on any system regardless of the distro or desktop environment. What I'm gonna be doing in this video is highlighting five of my favorite, just because they're my favorite doesn't mean they're the best. I would recommend going through these and trying some of them out. Now the first one I'm gonna talk about is called Fragments. What this is is a wonderful little torrent client that fits oh so beautifully within your GNOME ecosystem. Here I have two queued. I have the Linux Mint Torrent as well as the uh, Neon User Torrent. If I go ahead and start that up real quick, uh, you can see it download. If I click on it, you can see the download speed, the amount of active peers, some options to pause, open, remove it, and some more stuff. If I go ahead and close this out, we can access a lot more settings if we go over here to the main menu and then go under Preferences. Here we can switch between a light and dark theme. You can see up there, I just got notified that the Neon User Torrent was just completed. You can actually customize those notifications here. We have a remote control, so if I go ahead and open up the web interface, you can actually allow other users on your home network or whatever to connect to this system to go ahead and manage and control whatever torrents you happen to be downloading, which by the way, I'm assuming are all completely uh, legit Linux free and open source torrents. <laughs> Under downloading, we have some settings so you could change your download directory, change some queue settings. So here we can set the uh, maximum amount of downloads. And then under network, you have your port settings, some testing. You could set the maximum amount of peers and max overall peers that you're connected to and much more. Overall, a really nice utility that if you're in GNOME, you might as well have it on your system. I personally like it better than anything else that I've been using. It's just super sleek, clean, and I, I love it. Next up, we have Blankets. Now, this is a fascinating little application that will allow you to add background noises. I personally use this for if I'm reading like an academic journal that's incredibly boring and I just need something in the background, this is a good solution. If I play it real quick, we have rain, storm, waves, and a couple other things. I could go ahead and make the uh, fireplace a bit louder. And we can pause everything right here. There's a lot of different stuff. We have travel, interiors. You could just do general white or pink noise. Of course, we can do custom sound effects right there. And if we scroll up here, we have some additional settings. There's not much. We can add presets. Uh, go over to preferences. Uh, we can change it to dark mode, which it's already in. I'm pretty sure the system theme is overriding this. You can have it set to auto start in background if you'd like to. And then we have the option to keep playing as close, so then it will play in the background like a service. So. Just a nice little schnazzy utility that is, is worth playing around with. Next, this one is maybe my favorite of these, and this is the font downloader. What this will allow you to do is go ahead and browse various fonts that are uh, freely available on a repository here. So right here under handwriting, you can see the uh, preview of the font. You could type in your own thing. So if I was like trying to design a logo, I could type Tech Hut Media and see how that's gonna display there. Now, if I wanted to search one up, I could search like hand so I can find some handwriting ones. Uh, let, let's try this one. This one's uh, Hanley. So let's give that a quick install and you could see that it was basically instant. So what I did real quick, I'm opening up GIMP so I could go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna type in Tech Hut and then we're gonna change this to the new font that we just downloaded, which was Hanley, like that. There we go, so now we can check out that new font we just installed. Really nice tool, if I go to disregard changes real quick, there's uh, the option to just download the actual file directly. Of course, we have some settings, so to better uh, filter out what you're actually searching for, if we go to settings here, you have the ability to uh, disable various alphabets and some more settings. Just a really nice thing to have on hand, especially if you are somebody who does any graphic design work or needs those additional fonts. So with that, we're gonna open up Tangram. Now I did talk about this application in the past, 
but it is one of my, it's up there in my favorites. It's basically a really nice way to manage your web applications. Uh, right here are various websites. So if I go over here, we have a Discord server. If I go over here, we have YouTube, Vocal Board, Medium, Tech Hut, and uh, we have Linode here. Generally, these stay logged in, but I don't think I, I think I forgot to uh, trust this device. There we go. So overall, this is really nice, especially if you have a separate workflow that you don't want integrated into whatever main web browser you're using. An example of me actually using this, I put a lot of my school stuff on here. So I'll have my main school website, maybe Canvas, and then they use Microsoft. So I'll have Word, Excel, uh, OneDrive, a whole bunch of different things. So I could go ahead and quickly jump in between all my resources that I'm gonna need for school. This little example I made real quick on this uh, virtual machine is kind of like a workflow that I'd create working on like Tech Hut websites and things like that which by the way, uh, this right here is Linode. It's really easy to go ahead and use this. If I go ahead and click on create Linode, I can easily pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions, pick my region so I can get a server that is close to me. Starting at only $5 a month, you could go ahead and spin up your very own instance of Linode today. They have a one-click install marketplace with a ton of different things to choose from, such as your Minecraft server. We have CyberPanel, uh, Docker, Discourse, CSGO, and a whole bunch more. Go ahead and use Linode to host your projects. Anything that you need a Linux server for, you could go ahead and spin one up on Linode. Again, use that link down below for your $100 60-day credit. With that, that is this application. And of course, like all the others, we have some additional settings such as our tab positioning. To go ahead and actually create a new one of these, we just click this little plus right here. It opens up kind of a little web browser. If I wanted something like itsfoss.com, I would just go ahead and type that in. Click done. I have some options here so I could change the name, the home page, the notification priorities, because you can get notifications through this. Hit save, and there it is. So now I can easily switch in between all these different things that I was doing with a click. All these are containerized so they don't communicate with each other. So that's just another good thing about it. Now, with that, we're going to go into the very last application and maybe one of the most important if you are a, uh, a security conscious folk. So real quick, I went onto my server and pulled an image here. Now, images that you take, especially on your cell phone, contain a lot of data. And it's usually good practice to go ahead and clear out that data before you go ahead and upload it to the internet. Because unless if it goes through like some sort of compression process, it's going to retain a lot of data. So here, this one, for example, if I just open it up, you can see we have the uh, aperture, the exposure, ISO, the date, a whole bunch of stuff. But then if we even dive a little deeper, go into the properties here under image, we have the coordinates in which this picture was taken, the exact location, time and date and all that. You probably don't want that information within a simple image. So what you could do is use the Meta Data Cleaner application, click add files. I'm gonna go over to my desktop at this picture. And now you can see right here, there are 72 pieces of Meta data. In this, it's even gonna show more things that it's gonna go ahead and clear, including thumbnail lengths, white balance exposure mode, a whole bunch of things, including that location and time and date data and all that. If I go back, clean it, and it's done. So now if I open up this picture, you, you can see it's missing a lot of the stuff that was there. And if I right click and go into properties, it has almost no information, just what's absolutely required, which is the image type and the actual size of the image. I will note for this, it will overwrite. So do make backups if you do want copies with the metadata, just a little important note. And like all the other applications, there's some uh, simple settings and whatnot that you could go ahead and play around with. And you could add uh, a lot of different files at the same time if you'd like to, even add complete folders. So something that is nice that I would recommend you go ahead and check out. Uh, with all that, that concludes this. If you want to check out more, again, I'll be linking to this down below. Big thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video and our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You all are fantastic. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.